say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled Greetings. I am Dr. Avis Proctor, president of Harper College. Happy Veterans Day. I want to thank you all for being a part of our celebration today, especially our faculty and staff veterans, our student veterans, and our veterans in the community. We are grateful for your service and dedication in all you have done for our country. Veterans Day is an important tradition at Harper College, and so we are certainly glad we are taking the time today to honor all of you who have served our country and recognize your contributions to our society during or after your time on active duty, as well as your service to our communities. Each year, Harper enrolls nearly 500 students who either receive GI Bill benefits or who self-identify as veterans, active duty, spouses, or family members. We are committed to supporting our veterans, and one way we do that is through our Center for Student Veterans and Military Connected Students. The center opened in 2017 with the help of grants we received from the Home Depot Foundation, Student Veterans of America, and a private foundation. I happened to meet a couple of veteran students uh, in a recent student town hall, and they were glad to share about all the support that they received through our veteran center. Please be sure to visit harpercollege.edu slash veterans to learn more about our programs and resources. And please do not hesitate to reach out if you need support. Again, thank you to our veterans for your service, your sacrifice, and for your many contributions. We are a stronger community because of you, and we are united in our respect for you. Thank you. Good morning and thank you for sharing a part of your day observing Harper's Veterans Day. This morning I have the honor and the pleasure of introducing you to one of Harper's very own veterans, police officer Daniel Vargas. Good morning, Daniel. First, let me on behalf of all Harper employees thank you for your efforts on our behalf and second, for your willingness to be a part of today's program. So Danny, can you start by telling us a little bit about what branch you served in, for how long, your role in your last duty station? I was in the United States Army Reserves, and I was with the Reserves for 13 years. I recently just ended my uh, service. My last rank attained was Sergeant, and I was a squad leader. Uh, my MOS was a motor transportation operator, so driving vehicles uh, for logistical purposes to move any supplies or personnel from, you know, A to B. Um, and my last duty station was here in Darien, Illinois. Aside from wanting to be a police officer one day, I just saw myself wanting to, you know, wear the uniform and serve something greater than myself, be part of something greater than myself, and also to help me for, you know, down the road when I wanted to pursue my educational goals. Getting to meet everybody that I met, uh, all my brothers and sisters that I was able to serve along with, whether it be overseas or even stateside. Cherish everything, cherish the smallest things, um, because when you find yourself being so far away from it, whether it be overseas or even stateside, but not home, um, 
it's cherishing those small things that matter, um, those moments that you get to spend with you, you know, friends, family, loved ones. Uh, just being with them, I would say definitely cherish, cherish those moments. I would say more and more organizations have been created over time uh, since I've been in. Uh, and again, that was 13 years since I started. So back in 2008 to, to 2021 as of this year, there's been more and more organizations, um, whether it be from you know, your, just your local, state, or even your federal, just been more and more being created. And not just by service members themselves or veterans, you know, it's also by family members of service members that have you know, created those organizations to, to show us service members, those veterans, that they're out there, that they care and they want to do whatever they can to provide any assistance. I would say definitely reach out to all those organizations that are out there. Um, do not shy away from it. Um, they're there to help. They're, they want to help. They want to help you plan for your, you know, your, your career path, your, your career goals. And that's what they're there for, to help out. Um, that's one of the things that, you know, in the military, they preach that we're there to look out for one another. So definitely reach out and, you know, speak to another fellow veteran, another fellow service member. Supporting a new generation of veterans is just pretty much us old timers, you know, telling our stories, sharing with them the experiences that we've experienced and just improving upon that, building upon those foundations that have been laid there. Even from our, you know, prior, you know, years, other veterans that have, you know, come before us is just continuing to build upon those foundations that have been there to help out one another uh, along the way. Again, our sincere appreciation for your willingness to share your story as part of our observance. Any final words for the viewing audience on this Veterans Day 2021? I just want to say thank you to all the veterans out there, veterans here at Harper College. Uh, thank you guys for your service. I want to say thank you to your family members as well uh, for you know, their service by being there along the way uh, to help support you along you know, your career path in the military. Hello. My name is Jesus Molina. I'm the coordinator for the Center for Student Veterans and Military Connected Students. I'm a Marine Corps veteran that served from 1999 to 2003 and did one tour in Iraq for Operation Iraqi Freedom. In my role at Harper College, I assist student veterans and military connected students to transition from military life to civilian life. Student veterans are typically older than our traditional students. Some of them might be married, some of them might have children, and some even have disabilities. Our Veterans Center and our staff help to make that transition process easier. Our center is relatively new as it was built in 2017 and it was in large part due to the advocacy effort of Dr. Susan Grant, who is a Harper College professor and an Army veteran, as well as our student veterans. Looking back at my own experience, when I was, went to a community college in 2005, all we had was the financial aid office to drop off our GI Bill, GI Bill paperwork and that was pretty much it. Now we have a dedicated center for our students staff that know the experience that student veterans and military connected students are dealing with and can assist in that process. Our staff can answer questions regarding their education benefits, VA healthcare, as well as any internal and external resources. We also connect them to community organizations for veterans that include our local VFW and Legion posts, um, the Road Home Program, as well as the Mission Continues, to name a few. And to my fellow veterans, happy Veterans Day. Enjoy your time with family, get that free meal, and make sure to connect with your fellow veterans. And last but not least, Semper Fidelis. I joined the military back in 2009. It's been a family tradition for over 100 years. I was military police when I signed my contract in 2009. For me in the military, the thing that I realized I lacked sufficiently of was the discipline, especially the professional discipline that was bestowed upon me amongst my service and through the times of understanding proper ways of communication, working with superiors, understanding what my role is and understanding each and every role you have through employment is significant to the organization or company you are with. The thing I learned most that has served me well is the unofficial model the Marine Corps has is improvise, adapt, and overcome. I use that every day through any situation I am in because life is unpredictable. And with that as my mindset, it gives me an opportunity to move forward properly without any negligent effects going back towards me. 
The biggest advice I can give to new veterans is understanding what your benefits can do to you. Go on to the VA's website and look at the tools to see if you're utilizing your benefits at the appropriate times. For some of us, we want more than just four years of education. Make sure you're getting the most out of the money that is available to you. Do not just rush right into using your benefits and then when you really need it, it's gone. My vision for the future is for us veterans to come together again, joining the Student Veterans Association here at Harper College to create a stronger community so we can give back to the community, give back and create a brighter future. I joined the Air Force in 2011 and part of the reason was for opportunities. I, wanted, I didn't have a whole lot of opportunities where I grew up, so I wanted to find some new opportunities for myself and new ways to challenge myself. And I also wanted to travel. In the Air Force, I was security forces, which is a combination of law enforcement and security. So I did a little LE work, but mostly I did security patrols and entry control to different areas. The best thing I liked about being in the military, I enjoyed traveling, but I really enjoyed the people I got to know and the camaraderie that I was able to build with different people. The one thing that I learned in the military that served me well has been to take initiative. Uh, the Air Force relies a lot on checklists, like when this situation arise, arises, you do this, then this, then this, but no real situation ever fits a checklist. Something always comes up that's not gonna fit and you have to be able to step up to the plate and make a decision. And looking for a new direction and purpose, personally, I struggled with this when I separated and because I really wanted to uh, prove that I didn't need uh, basically the veterans benefits and other things of that nature. And the advice I would give is not so much do it for yourself, but do it for other people, see who you can help. My vision for the future would be, um, I would like to see the culture transition more into more positivity. I know as veterans, we complain a lot and a lot of things, there are a lot of legitimate complaints we have, but I would like to see um, more focus on positivity and building up rather than tearing down. My name is Rogelio Villa. I served in U.S. Army National Guard for six years. Uh, last duty station was first of the 178 Infantry. Um, and I uh, deployed from 08 to 09 to uh, Afghanistan, Fab Metalam in the Logman province. Um, I joined, I believe it was around 2005. And uh, I worked in the S3 shop and uh, mostly with the Tactical Operations Center. But during my deployment, I was a gunner, a uh, convoy gunner, providing uh, security and uh, pretty much security and going out to any calls, QRF, Quick Reaction Force, um, security for EOD, Explosive Orders Disposal Unit, and um, you know any calls that have any action going, activity going on, and we will roll out in four, four truck convoys. So I was the lead gunner. Um, currently, I'm volunteering as the second platoon leader for the Mission Continues, a national veteran organization that helps veterans uh, to serve, continue serving after their service. Uh, my transition from the military, I would say, was uh, difficult. I, uh, I ETS from my unit uh, not too long after uh, my deployment, so I had a very hard time, um, you know, dealing with with anger issues and mental health and physical, which I wasn't really paying attention to, but to the signs, but my wife did point them out. And uh, I really didn't seek any help, um, you know, and it, it just really made it, I didn't have a job either. So it was a very rough time for me. And I had a little daughter who didn't really know me because I was gone watching when she was very young. I was gone for a whole year, so had to start all over with her as far as my relationship. Um, it, took, it, took, it took some time. It took some time for me to realize uh, that I needed some help. Um, I finally did, you know, I sought out help, the VA. And also um, one of the recommendations that was given to me was to join a vet organization um, so that I can meet other vets like myself uh, because, you know, I'm not the only one out there dealing with these, these issues. So I ended up joining the YMCA Urban Warriors Mentorship Program, mentoring high at risk youth. From there, um, I had heard uh, about the mission continues. And it was a um, someone who was doing their fellowship program at the YMCA Urban, Urban Warriors through the mission continues. 
And I picked my interest. I started looking into it. And next thing you know, I ended up getting accepted to the fellowship. And from there, I was invited to be a platoon leader. So, I mean, my whole time doing these things really helped me to, to heal, to understand my issues, to understand how to deal with them, to, to talk to others who were going through the same thing and know that I wasn't alone and, and um, you know, built uh, relationships, uh, long lasting relationships. Uh, uh, volunteering with organizations, uh, veteran organizations can really help you to help your, your healing process. Um, and, and help you deal and cope with, with your issues. I think the services have uh, increased greatly. Um, I think there's more information now out there. There's more organizations that have popped up. Um, back then when I got out, um, I didn't really know of any organizations. Uh, I, I, it, you know, I, I don't know, I never sought the information, but it never came to me either. Now I get emails, I get um, calls, you know, uh, commercials. It's all over the place, you know. There's a uh, there's a lot of services out there now that that can help out a veteran. So I think it's 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 changed a lot, and for the better, I believe. The the Mission Continues is a good program. Uh, it has a two two parts to it. Uh, one of them being the Service Leadership Corps, uh, which is pretty much a training a program. Uh, that runs in cohorts to uh, teach veterans uh, to help develop, you know, the leadership skills, um, to learn how to engage the community, um, how to use storytelling to be more impactful with the community that they're engaging, um, helping them network, things like that. Um, there's a service leadership core, and then there's also a women's, just all women leadership core. Um, then besides that, we have the service platoons, which is what I do. Uh, the service platoon is uh, here in the city of Chicago, we have two, two platoon leaders, uh, myself, second platoon and first platoon, Nestor Savala, and we both work in different areas. But those are the opportunities that uh, TMC offers. But besides that, it also offers an opportunity for anybody to, uh, to come out and volunteer um, with the service platoons, engaging the community helping uh, out with service projects, participating in social projects and support projects. Well, uh, we update the platoon leaders, each uh, update their events. We do one event per month. Um, I mean, we can do two, sometimes we do two, two events, but that depends on, on, on the platoon leaders. Uh, we, we usually um, update the events up in the uh, TMC website and the missioncontinues.org. Uh, website, webpage, but you do have to go to the Chicago platoon because like I said, it's a national, so you'll have all the cities up there. You select Chicago. Once you select Chicago, you can select between second and first platoon. We both have events going on every month. Um, we try not to have them at the same time um, and not step on each other so that, you know, we have, uh, people have more opportunities to come out and, uh, and join our events. Or they can also email me at rvia at missioncontinues.org. And I'd be more than happy to send out invitations. Um, once you do attend one event, you're automatically put in our database. So you'll automatically also receive via email any events. I do have one vet that maybe did not inspire me from just one particular event, but from all of them. And uh, his name is Brian's and he's a Navy veteran. He's been uh, coming out to volunteer since, my, since I first took over the role as a platoon leader, which was about four, four years ago. And uh, ever since then, he, he's been coming out. Um, he actually has two jobs and uh, he still manages to find time to come out on Saturdays and, and volunteer. And sometimes he'll let me know that he just didn't go to sleep. He went straight to the uh, events. And uh, he lately, uh, halfway through the four years, like after two years, he started bringing his son, his young son. And just the last uh, event that I had, he brought his young daughter as well. So it's been growing and I think he's just a great inspiration and motivation. Um, I really respect him for that. Finding time to come out with his family to, to, uh, to volunteer together, it's just a beautiful thing. And uh, 
as far as groups, I do have the Green Green Card Veterans uh, as well. They've been very supportive. Uh, that's an organization that advocates for deported uh, veterans, and they've been coming out supporting me, and you know, with their members. I really appreciate that support because um, it's it's very motivating to see different organizations collaborating, working together, and uh, working as veterans, brothers and sisters, just like in the military. You know, it's, it's a beautiful. It's beautiful. I, re I really enjoy that. Uh, my vision for the future is just setting an example and letting the new generation uh, pick up where we leave off, uh, just like we did, um, you know, with those who came before us, uh, you know, showing that once you get out of the military doesn't mean that's it, just because you take off your uniform doesn't mean you, you stop serving, you know, you continue to serve, uh, just different ways, and there's a lot of need for uh and use for veterans who have all these skills that acquired in the military to be able to motivate and um, take action within their communities as a veteran. The opportunities that we offer is an opportunity to come out and join our events, get to know other community leaders because we also, the way we work is we, we engage community organizations that may have a mission in place already uh, for example, I'm working on youth violence intervention, so I link up with a lot of organizations that already have those missions within the community, and right now I'm working in Little Village. Um, so we have a lot of community leaders, community members uh, coming out to my events as well, not just my vets, but we, um, we all work together. So it's a great chance to network, great chance to talk to other vets, uh, link up to um, you know, uh, engage people that otherwise maybe you would never have the opportunity to do so. And uh, the opportunities are also, like I said, the uh, leadership core. Uh, that's a good way to develop those skills as well. And the opportunities to help their community is, is, is there. Uh, we've been focusing on a lot of community gardens and uh, supporting food pantries and other, other things that uh, the community has going on that helps to beautify and to provide a space, a safe space for the youth to come out and um, do their programming. I would say definitely link up with one of these uh, or veteran organizations out there. There's so many, um, you know, it, and not every organization might be to the liking of, 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 might be to your particular liking, but there are so many that um, you got to check them out, try them out and you know, uh, start networking. Uh, and I'm sure you'll find an organization out there that fits your needs. Um, so engage them because there you'll find other people just like yourself. And uh, the first thing is that you don't feel alone anymore. Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Mary Ann Janicek, and I serve as Harper College's provost. I like the word serve because it describes what all of us at Harper are committed to, serving our students. And some of our students and members of our Harper community have already served in another capacity. They've served their country. And that type of service has special meaning for me. My dad served in the Philippines in World War II, and he was so proud of his service that after the war, he enlisted in the Naval Reserves and served for another 20 years. One of my earliest childhood memories was dad in uniform getting ready to go on one of his last maneuvers. My dad taught me a lot about service. Almost every summer, we visited Washington, D.C., went to the Capitol and the White House, and he always reminded me why that city and those buildings were important. They represent our democracy, our freedom, our way of life. I think of my dad a lot, especially on Veterans Day. And not just my dad, but all those who served in World War II, in Korea, in Vietnam, in Iraq, and in Afghanistan. All those who helped to defend and protect the freedoms and values that we hold dear. Today of all days, we remember you. We celebrate you. We honor you. 
and we salute you. So to all of you this Veterans Day, thank you for your service.